All right, this is an interview with Jerry Murphy on August 21st, 1998. Audio test. Okay. Can I have you uh, say and spell your name? Yeah, it's uh, Jerry Murphy, J-E-R-R-Y-M-U-R-P-H-Y. Okay, and your PIN number? 376. 376. What year did you graduate from FC? You know, that's a great question. Uh, I graduated a couple of times, um, mm -hmm. and I actually started working on the master's degree before I actually completed the bachelor's degree. And I think I graduated bachelor's degree officially was 64, mm -hmm. and the master's degree I believe was uh, 66 or 67, but I was working on a second master's degree at that point also. So, so you, I, you pledged in 61? No, I pledged in uh, 59. In 59, okay. Yes. Um, and I pledged in spring 59, and uh -huh. I pledged in fall 60, <laughs> because... <laughs> In those days, uh, you couldn't, uh, it, you didn't go active until after the end of the semester, oh. and if you didn't make grades, you didn't. Huh. So for two semesters, I didn't make grades. <laughs> so I actually went active with the fall sixty plus class after mm -hmm. pledging for three semesters. So I've got more damn pledge brothers than. I guess, you know, anybody <laughs> yeah. else anywhere. So you're close with three different pledge classes? or? Yeah, although the spring 60 was a zero pledge class. There were no pledges that oh, semester. Really? Why was that, you know? It's the lousy job of rushing. Uh, and uh, spring, springs were real weak there for a while mm -hmm. anyway. Spring 60 was zero, 61 was one, 62 was two, and 63 was three. It's easy to remember them that huh. way. So um, were, were academics placed very high in the order of, of things with fraternities back yeah, I guess I guess they were. Uh, they were conscious of, of what the grade point average was in, in the fraternity and so on. But um, <clears throat> I, I don't think fraternities were as serious about uh, uh, academic the academic side during that period than they are now. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really have to be now, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, a lot, it's a lot tougher at school now than it was then. You went on to become president of the house, correct? Yeah. What made you want to do that? Well, I pretty much used up the other offer. <laughs> no, I, I was just uh, I was very uh, dedicated fraternity guy, and um, it was uh, the most important thing in my life at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they'd run out of everybody else. And <laughs> no, I I'd uh, you know done a lot of other things, and I thought that was uh, that was the ultimate final challenge. And uh, I was finally ready to graduate, and so I thought, well, let's, let's do the last one, do it right, yeah. finish it off. Did you have any specific goals going into your presidency that you wanted to see with the House happen? Uh, no, nothing in particular. You were, you were pretty much mired down with, uh, you know, all the little things that everybody is, is involved with, activities and social and, and getting rushed done at the beginning of the semester and all the rest of the things that, uh, you know, that take up any, you know, any president's uh, work. Uh, I was uh, very active throughout the whole period I was in the house with uh, uh, activities associated with uh, performance. Um, the Spring Sing uh, show, uh, my roommate uh, Dick Orr was uh, the uh, director of that and I assisted him and then we had another production in the fall called Trollios which was an Olio show associated with Homecoming which had a lot of singing in it but was more directly um, pointed towards humor mm -hmm. with some singing. And I directed a couple of those and we won uh, the two that I that I direct. No, I think we we got second the first time when I directed and then won the, the next one. Mm -hmm. And then I directed the whole show for the school the following year. And uh, that was a lot of fun. So you were also very involved in campus activities as well. Not much. I, I just kind of fell into the Trollios thing because I had done it uh, in association with the house and, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the school wanted to discontinue the Trollios show and I, I thought it was a great activity for the fraternities and sororities and um, 
everybody had a good time and the attendance was good and I couldn't figure out why they wanted to cut it out. So I fought very hard for the show to come back the following year and I was successful in getting it to come back and have another year of the Trolio show and, and uh, then they discontinued it. So huh. I have the dubious distinction of directing the last Trolio show. Oh, that's good. That's good. Did they have, um, they still do the, the floats back then, the, the homecoming floats and the parade? They didn't have floats when I was in. They, they just uh, discontinued that uh, just prior to, uh, to my arrival. Uh, they did uh, homecoming decorations, mm -hmm. which were huge. I mean, just really big productions in those days. Everybody in the house worked on those, and we were very much an activities kind of a house, so we were big in all of that kind of stuff, and, mm -hmm. and, and did very well with homecoming de decorations. Did that really bring everyone together for late night kind of excursions? Yeah, uh, it, it, it did. Um, certain guys uh, worked uh, extremely hard uh, for that, and, and were more activities oriented, I guess, than, than other people were. Uh, I remember a guy who eventually became my roommate, Ron Rogan, worked so hard on those house decks and did such a wonderful job with them. But we had a lot of guys who worked very hard and people who were there that were alums that would come back and, and work real hard with the house. Uh, uh, a fellow by the name of Bill Tieford uh, uh, worked really hard with the house with any, any kind of musical production. Mm -hmm. uh, so he helped uh, tremendously with Trillios and also with the Spring Sing he was there. Uh, playing piano for Rush and things like that. And I think maybe that's one of the reasons that I ended up pledging the Teak House was at least partially due to Bill Tieford because I had kind of a piano background and I was, I was very, uh, uh, you know, I was, I was very, ch you know, charmed by him and the fact that, uh, you know, he could play practically anything and uh, here was this house that had a lot to do with music and uh, so forth and, 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 uh, I remember very distinctly, um, just after Rush was over and I had plays and we had a good sized plays class, uh, Bill was at the house and, and he was playing the piano and uh, I came up to the piano and I asked him to play something like, uh, you know, Melancholy Baby or something like, you know, I don't know what it was that I asked him to play and he looked up at me and he said, Rush is over, kid. And <laughs> I'm playing whatever he wanted to play. <laughs> but, but he was great during Rush and for all the other stuff too. When you, when you were president, did you find it a uh, rush to be a difficult thing, or was it just a challenging aspect of the... It wasn't one of those things that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. We had other guys in the house that did very well in it, and I, I was kind of one of the troops, and I showed up and did that sort of thing, but mm -hmm. selling myself in the house was not an easy thing for me to do. Um, but it's absolutely the lifeblood of the house, and it was uh, considered uh, probably the most important thing, single thing that we would do each semester. Uh, we were nowhere near as big a house in those days as the house is now, and um, uh, boy, you know, a couple of bad rushes in a row, and we'd get real small, and we had we were really struggling to to make the you know the the mortgage payments and all the other things associated with it. Uh, after all, when I pledged the house, the house had only been on campus a little over, I guess, 11 years. Hmm. So uh, right now I'm working with the Long Beach State uh, Teak House, and, and uh, they've only had their house over here about, uh, about nine years now. So I, I know it's a real struggle now with them, and I, I try to point them towards Beta Sigma and say, you know, look at what can happen to you if you just keep working and keep pledging and more guys come and it just keeps going and you keep paying off that mortgage that uh, eventually it all pays off. And, uh, and uh, I don't know if they listen to me or not. <laughs> um, I was going to say, the size of the house was, was smaller than some yes. of the thirties, and the house at that point was relatively young, only about 10, 11 years, 10, 11 old, years yeah. old. Um, how was it with the rest of the row being such a traditional uh, big fraternity row? Um, how do you think you guys fit in in the whole scheme of, of the Greek system? Well, we were not certainly one of the most prestigious houses on the row, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a struggle for us. We were known as kind of an activities house and a political house. I mean, we had guys that would run for office and so on, but most of the time we had only about 30 guys in the house. Mm -hmm. um, the 631 house slept uh, 27, I think, at that time. Um, so we were struggling to have enough guys to keep the house full because that was, you know, economics. 
you know, you'd end up eating beans and peaches or something like that, you know, on, because you didn't have enough money to, you know, make uh, all the meals. Um, so it, it was it was a struggle at that time, and I there were several houses on the road that didn't like us much, and uh, usually jock houses didn't like us, and because we were kind of more academic and activities and so on oriented. And I remember that the, the five size who were across the street uh, used to come over and scream at us, and and uh, they had. Uh, uh, a lot of the you know the varsity football players and so on were in that uh, that house and mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't have anybody in the house that uh, remotely was of the size of the guys that were in their house and so on. But in one of the cagiest moves that I think we ever made, uh, we challenged their house to a flag football game, and and bet a keg of football or a keg of beer on the outcome of the of the football game, oh. and. Um, uh, Knowing, of course, that they would beat the heck out of us, and but feeling that if then we put up the cake and we'd all end up drinking this beer together after the game, that they couldn't really get terribly mad at us again, and and it worked out exactly to plan, exactly that way. And and years later, I talked to a Fisai, and they had no clue that uh, that uh, that was the plan that we had was that, that we yes. knew we they thought we were serious and really thought that we could beat them in football, and and. Uh, uh, no, we didn't didn't really feel that way. <laughs> so you outsmarted them, and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's really nice. Um, did that kind of like underdog type of position like bring the house closer together? Yeah, I think we were very very close. We were extremely close, and uh, to this day, I I think my closest friends are still Teeks, you know, from that time, uh, and I'm I have a very very active relationships with uh, probably uh, uh, three or four guys. Uh, I had more, unfortunately. We've, we've lost some, some of my best friends have passed away in the last uh, couple of years. Uh, they were good buddies of mine from the house, but there's still, still a few guys that <laughs> we're still kicking around. Huh. Um, can you think of any, uh, like if, if one thing that you got out of the house that you cherish the most, like the one tangible thing, that you uh, got from being inactive in the house? Well, there's lots of things. I mean, I mean, I still, you know, a lot of things associated with the university, at least. I mean, I've continued going to all the football games, and I've been uh, going to basketball games for 30 years now, I guess. I mean, I really have to be a masochist to be an SC basketball fan for 30 years. Uh, but I think the friendships still, but that that's the one single thing. Um, you know, when I had my my uh, 50th birthday uh, a few years back, um, I think there were like, um, I, I didn't want to have a great big thing and I told my wife Cindy I just, you know, want to have like six, eight couples or something like that over to the house and we celebrated. And uh, I think s like five or six out of the eight were teaks from, from my house. So still in, at that point, you know, even after all these years. Mm -hmm. These are the friendships that have uh, persisted. Hmm. Um, see. Can you remember any, uh, any specific, like, like a song from, from your era that would describe like, you know, how your uh, relationship with Teak was? Kind of an odd question, but I'm searching for, for audio clips and whatnot. To, to <laughs> Well, I was a song chairman of the house too for about uh, three years or four years or something like that, and I started all the fraternity songs. and And, and Teak was supposedly the singing fraternity, and we had lots of uh, raucous uh, uh, songs that we would sing. And for this anniversary celebration, I hope to you know be sitting around with a couple of guys that remember some of those songs and get them going, you know, for the dinner. Um, so there were a lot of a lot of songs. Uh, just, just crazy, wild, a uh, little bit kind of double X kind of songs. And some of them even that uh, uh, were just uh, great fun. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to singing them again. I can't think of a uh, of a particular popular song from that era that okay. that uh, epitomizes my relationship with fraternity. But 
Uh, have you, you stayed involved with uh, the house and also with the Long Beach chapter, correct? Yeah, I was on the board of control for uh, several years. I was chapter advisor for about three or four years, I guess, in the late 60s. And um, uh, that, um, I stayed active up uh, well into the 70s before I got, you know, really, really burned out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, 1989, I became active with the uh, with the local uh, Cal State Long Beach chapter mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, actually I'm, I'm the uh, uh, the financial management end of the partnership that uh, owns the house mm -hmm. and curiously enough uh, of, of the partners that own the house uh, two of the partners are uh, Michael's Educational Trust and Mark's Educational Trust and this is oh. 10 years ago, and, and kiddingly, I at the time to the guys in the house, I said, you know, I've got two sons that have a financial interest in the house. I hope this means that, you know, if they go to Cal State Long Beach, that uh, they'll be able to be members of the tea cows. And they said, hell, bring them down now. We'll just run through. <laughs> and I said, well, no, we better wait until that happens. But uh, so uh, one of the current members of Beta Sigma, you know, actually owns part of the Long Beach Fraternity House. Hmm. So, a little cross-fertilization. Yeah, it's interesting there. Why, why did you uh, want to stay involved like, with the Board of Control and what made you go back? And... It, it was so much, it meant so much to me. I was, uh, when I came to high school, mm -hmm. I was an extremely introverted uh, guy. And um, I just frankly didn't have a clue about anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I got to the fraternity and uh, pledged the fraternity, um, I learned so much uh, about the world and about the... Uh, I mean, it just, it, 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 it formed who I am. Uh, and. Um, and it just uh, has, you know, continued to affect my entire life to this day. I mean, I am what I am because of what happened at the fraternity house. So I, I had to stay active. I love that fraternity house, and I, it was, it's just really has been, it continues to be really important to me that Beta Sigma continues to uh, uh, be, be uh, an important fixture on that SC campus. Okay, uh, one last question. Okay. It's a tough one. Um, if you could describe the fraternity when you were in it, or now, in three words, what three words would you choose? Well, besides the obvious of love, charity, and esteem, mm -hmm. um, I have a hard time finding three better ones than that. I mean, the guys were so close. Um, we'd do almost anything for each other. Mm -hmm. and. Um, And, and I think we were truly brothers, you know? If you had to throw brotherhood or brothers or something like that in there someplace, we were probably closer than, than most real brothers. I mean, looking at my sons, they have a tendency to kind of kind of be on each other uh, somewhat. Uh, I hope that works itself out in the long run, but, but, but we were closer than brothers. And uh, still are. Are there any, uh, any names you'd like to mention, um, for the record, like any uh, accomplishments that of other people in the house? Well, I, I think there are certain guys that uh, uh, busted their tail for the fraternity, and I mentioned and, and would manage to squeeze in, uh, talk about Bill Tiefert, Ron Rogan, uh, but there are a couple of guys who were chapter advisors that, uh, boy, I'll tell you, they put in just countless hours. Uh, um, Tony Soul is, uh, is one who's, who continues to serve and serve and serve and serve, and um, we're going to need to take two on this. Can't think of the other guy's name. <laughs> Dave Oakley. Dave Oakley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dave Oakley. Uh, I mean, all the time that I was an undergraduate, uh, Dave Oakley was there, and and uh, we probably have uh, robbed him of, of some of his life. You know, I mean, we we probably actually shortened his life. The poor man uh, had to put up with so much mm -hmm. during that period when he was chapter advisor. He was the second chapter advisor that we had. We had Chuck Bishop was the uh, the first chapter advisor, and he was had been chapter advisor when I joined the fraternity since the beginning in '48, and then uh, came Dave Oakley. And Dave, uh, gosh, must have been 
six, six years or something like that mm -hmm. he put in at that job. Tough, tough job. And uh, But uh, like I say, we probably shortened his life. <laughs> Dave Oakley redesigned uh, 631 a couple of times, did he not? Yeah, he worked uh, very hard on that. Uh, and and, uh, um, and uh, so he's the one to blame. <laughs> <laughs> you can blame him and John Meisenhelder I think actually worked uh, has had worked with him for for quite a few years mm -hmm. and uh, John probably he worked on the fraternity projects as well I believe and and, and more lately that most uh, John Hamilton has has worked very hard as an architect uh, in designing what we hope <laughs> will become the future house mm -hmm. which you guys have been rushing on uh, his designs now for about 10 12 years or something mm -hmm. like that that the house was going to be built just any moment now. So, and in fact, they're talking about that now. They're talking about uh, possibly next year, uh, as soon as next year, knocking down East mm -hmm. and building a new East. I'm really surprised that East too. hasn't either either burned down or just collapsed oh, yeah. long ago. I mean, probably the the, the, the proudest moment of, of, of my period as chapter advisor was 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 purchasing that house and getting that piece of property, uh, and having those two houses side by side. Um, Getting rid of the Sigma News who were next door to us was at, at least half the bonus. But getting, you know, we were starting to grow and getting the additional house uh, uh, really great. But uh, I'm just kind of surprised that the electrical has held up as well as it has over the years, and and the doggone place hasn't just burned just flat to the ground. I just was terrified of that all the time I was on the board. Yeah, we're, we're still terrified of it too. <laughs> we live with it every now day. my son's living in it, so. <laughs> <laughs> um. Is there anything else that you'd like to to say? I only that I, I think um, uh, you know if I had had to, to look at my two proudest moments at T, um, probably uh, they're they're tied. Number one was when I was initiated. Finally, God knows I had pledged long enough. And and the second proudest moment was uh, when I uh, administered the oath to my son. And that was uh, that was a big moment for me. And you have a younger son, is it? Mark, Mark yeah. Mark? There's another legacy coming along. He's been uh, a, a SC ball boy now for about five years for the basketball team. And uh, goes to uh, football games when he can squeeze them in, uh, not playing soccer or something like that on Saturdays. He, and goes to homecoming and goes to the teak booth and so on and so forth. And I've always told my sons that, you know, you can go anywhere to school that you want to, do anything you want to. but. Uh, uh, I've been working hard on uh, brainwashing uh, those guys now for a lot of years. Wouldn't be surprised if he shows up, you know, in some pledge class a couple of years, a few years from now. Oh, look forward to it, actually. Okay, I think I'm done with my questions. Good, uh, and I don't have any for you, so. <laughs>